Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Electrosurgery or radiosurgery can be a valuable tool in the efficient practice of restorative dentistry. Here are some examples of how it can help you in your everyday practice. Let's say, for example, there's a very, very short crown to be used as a bridge abutment, and we want to elongate the crown. With electrosurgery, we can very quickly and efficiently remove the gingival tissue and make the crown much longer so that we have more retention as a bridge abutment. Very often when patients have lost anterior teeth and they're wearing temporary partials, or flippers as we call them, and they're wearing them for some length of time, the gingival tissue on the palatal side grows up over the lingual surfaces. And as it proliferates over this cingulum area, it hides the actual lingual architecture of the teeth. And very often we will have to, before we start the bridge, remove that extra tissue. And a very efficient way of doing that is with electrosurgery. We'll find also that there are areas where we'll want to change the ridge area. If there's not enough room to place an acidic facing in this particular area, then we can use electrosurgery to recontour the soft tissue. There are many uh, types of electrosurgery units. The particular one that is in use here at the dental school is a Coles radiosurgery. This is a bi-terminal, a bi-terminal radiosurgery unit. This metal plate, called an indifferent plate, is placed behind the patient's back on the chair, so they are sitting uh, right against this. And then the other end of the wire that's connected to this plate is plugged into the portion of the unit called conductive. Now, as I mentioned, if the patient is wearing a suit coat or heavy clothing, have them take the suit coat off. And uh, in uh, the case of females where there's heavy undergarments, you have to place this perhaps up high on the shoulder. The second part of this conduction of the current through the patient then is the surgery tip. And the surgery tip is plugged into the portion of the unit called surgery. And this, then the surgery tip or surgery electrode then will take various types of tips, various uh, shapes of tips. You follow the architecture of the gingival crevice and actually make a trough to the base of the crevice all the way around the tooth and then elastic impression material then can be easily injected down around your finishing lines. One of the dangers of this technique is if you do not know the architecture of this crevice, you can actually make the crevice much deeper than it was before you started and therefore hasten the development of pocket formation. So when this troughing tip is used, great care should be exercised. The other tip I'd like to show you is the loop tip. And this tip looks almost like a hoop. It's a round ring of wire. And this can be used to remove broad areas of tissue. Like, for example, on this model, where we wanted to remove some of the soft tissue to make a little more room for a potic, then this tip is used to remove these broad areas of tissue. The last tip I'd like to show is the actual straight wire surgery tip. And this is used to remove the soft tissue to the depth of the crevice. And here it's very, very important with a zero probe to measure the pocket or the crevice depth all the way around so that we know where we're going. And then the entire soft tissue is removed to the depth of the crevice 
being careful not to touch bone. And then we can expect a regeneration of about a millimeter and a half, again, of soft tissue. So in using this tip, you have to pre-plan. If you know that you're going to get a millimeter and a half of regeneration, then you can about tell where you will put your finishing line. Now, it's rather difficult to use this on the lingual, so this type of tip, this type of tip can be bent. And very often we will make an auxiliary bend on this, as you can see here. And then we can use this then to come in on the lingual surface <coughs> of central incisors to, uh, and, and anterior teeth to remove the gingival tissue in this particular area. We're going to perform some electrosurgery on the lingual surfaces of the anterior abutment teeth. Usually when a patient wears a flipper or a temporary partial for some length of time, the soft tissue on the lingual will grow up over the lingual surfaces of these anterior teeth. After you have measured the architecture of the sulcus and you know how deep it is in the configuration of the sulcus, then we will proceed to our electrosurgery. We usually will use a plastic evacuator tip to remove the odor. A plastic tip is very important because if a metal uh, tip is touched with the cutting tip, the electrical impulse can be transmitted up the tip to the dental assistant. Also, we will use a plastic mirror. The electrosurgery is done in a brushing stroke. That off of the gone. And you'll notice that there's no bleeding associated with this type of surgery. This is one of the advantages of electrosurgery, that it is kind of an instant surgery that uh, leaves a very clean field where it'll be very easy to take a little base impression following this. In this case, we have a post crown that failed. You'll note the short post. The crown to root ratio is entirely wrong we should have a post that's two-thirds the length of the root. Now I'd like to show you this particular post and uh, the preparation in the mouth. Note that the tooth is quite broken down and that uh, there's a lot of tissue grown over the what's left of the abutment tooth. So through electrosurgery, we are going to expose this remnant of the, the root, and then make a pin core in combination with a post core using a composite material. You'll note that I'm using a fast, broad, to remove this tissue. has been wearing a temporary partial or flipper for some time and the soft tissue has grown up over the lingual surfaces of the cuspid teeth. Now, you'll notice when I do cut this soft tissue that I will use a sweeping cut. And you'll notice also that there's no bleeding associated with the type of surgery that we're doing. We're simply exposing the cervical finishing lines and lengthening the crown somewhat. 
from this angle. Can we see that alright? Okay. And you'll notice now that we have taken the soft tissue away. There's been no bleeding associated with this surgery. And we have now exposed our finishing line and lengthened the crown. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.